Thank you all for joining. Um, so this is obviously the, the 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 session that we're hosting to to kind of explore the success at Westchester County with uh, mobile LPR. Thank you for joining. I am, and let's uh, let's go to the introduction slide here. I'm Vin Bessie. I'm the regional sales manager for Mobotics. Uh, with me is uh, Lieutenant Brian Hess from Westchester County Police Department. You will hear uh, the term RTC thrown around as well. Um, we will introduce that as basically real time crime. Um, a division or a, a, an organization within Westchester County Police Department that uh, Lieutenant will, will introduce and explain. So you can kind of associate him with both Westchester, Westchester County Police Department and also commanding officer of RTC. And so I thought it's best to kick it off with not a very detailed explanation, but let's chat a little bit about robotics because it obviously is an important part of the story here, right? So who's robotics? Um, we're bigger than, than, if you haven't heard of us, we're bigger than you think we are. We've been around for 21 years now. And for the last 21 years, since 1999, we've been a major provider of commercial grade security surveillance equipment for the world. Uh, we make really high end cameras. Um, we're kind of unique in the regard that we're made in Germany. So we're, we're not sourced from a lot of components in Asia. We at Mobotics in house uh, assemble, build, engineer, and do all the firmware development for our products uh, as a one touch, uh, one touch location. So we're able to really control the, the components and the, and the type of, types of materials that go into our products. That really has resulted in uh, a reputation for, for putting cameras out there that last a long, long time, um, like, like cameras that last a decade or so. And part of that is build quality, because we're, again, we're controlling the components that go into our products. And part of that is uh, the way we were engineered. So we were engineered with the idea that there would be no moving parts in any of our products. So there's no fan, there's no heater blower, there's no cut filter, nothing's moving in our devices. And so by removing those commonly, those components that commonly fail, We've expanded the lifetime of our product. So we have a very well documented eight to nine year lifespan of our cameras. And again, very commonly cameras last a decade, 10 years or so. Um, another kind of cool thing is we're very unique in the way the cameras look. And as you can see on the screen here, um, we have a four portfolio, but these are the four cameras we're essentially gonna be talking about. And when I say talking about, I don't mean we're gonna go deep into tech specs. This is not really a robotic sales, um, you know, robotic SKU sales presentation. It's very much gonna be about LPR. But I do think it's important to kind of go over the background. So if, so if you, you kind of know what we're talking about when we get there. You can see there's basically two types of cameras here. There's the cameras on the left that look like a face. Um, I have one of these here. If you can see me, if you can see my, my camera footage, it's cool. Um, but it looks like a face, right? So why does it look like a face? Well, we have different lenses that we can put into our cameras. This is particularly advantageous when it comes to LPR because I can give you a color lens, a night lens, and an IR emitter in one device that's going to last a decade, right? So we, we, we tend to do well with that sort of application. So this is one camera. The second camera, the ones that are going in the vehicles, the ones that we'll talk about the most, uh, is the one on the far right here called the S74. And again, with the idea that we want to give you an idea of what you're looking at. Hey, hey, this... let me, ben, let me interrupt you. I don't think anyone sees your screen. We just see you and me. Really? All right. That's important. Yeah. There we go. That's probably what needed to happen. Sorry about that. Yeah, that's better. There we go. Oh, there, you didn't really miss. You so, so you guys missed our pictures. There we go. There's there's our beautiful, lovely pictures. I'm Vin. This is Lieutenant Hess. Um, the camera on the right is the one is the S74. This is the camera base. This is what's going to be in the trunk or mounted on the side of the car, wherever you, you decide to put this. But this is the camera itself. All the brains are done here. You then can basically run a cable and attach a small sensor to the camera. We can host up to three or four. This is a six megapixel sensor, right? Again, we're not getting too technical, but my point is we're very unique in the regards that we can give you a very small camera to go wherever you want it to go. Whether that's in a, uh, in like in a trailer, as you'll see in a, in a neem enclosure. Yeah. And anyway, you'll see a bracket on screen at some point, right? So all we're doing basically is we're taking these sensors and we're slipping them into these custom brackets that Westchester County had fabricated and we can mount them on top of the camera or we can put these inside the, the grill. But by doing this, we can we can we can fit to a large number of vehicles just by the way the camera is already built, right? Which which is pretty unique. So let me go back here. Now um, I kind of want to kick it off by talking about the evolution of security. Right? Again, this is this is my goal is to kind of set the stage for what Lieutenant's going to be speaking about. So where you know how have things changed quite a bit? So in the you know in the early nineties. Um, it was very common for buildings to be wide open. If you had a visitor log, you'd have something like this on the left and people would just sign it or not sign it and come and go. And what we've learned is that there's an incredible amount of value being placed 
in knowing who's in your facility, right? And so a lot of this has kind of gone away. You see a lot of these buildings, a lot of the doors are now locked, they're secured. You have man traps. You often have to check, um, announce who you're talking to with intercoms before you can enter a building because people want to control who's coming and going and they want to identify the people that are that are inside. Um, where, you know, the next step of that, where, where things are really going is people have realized it's also very valuable to know who's on your property, whether that's in the parking lot or on the streets, in this case, on the streets of the, the county. And so technology has really allowed us to do that in, in a way that we really haven't been able to, to do before, which is why you're hearing more and more about the use of LPR and the use of, the use of cameras. The technology is advanced enough to where we really encourage people to think beyond the concept that cameras are just exclusively for video, right? So if you go back 20 years, it was, it was pretty simple, right? You put a camera on the wall, it looked at the door and you said, okay, camera, watch this door. And if anything happens, I'll go back and I'll pull the footage, right? And then technology evolved and we came into like the 2000s or you know, such, such with the invention of IP cameras, um, 2010s, something like that. And it, it became, okay, camera, tell me what happened here, but also give me the ability to see what's happening now. And you gave people the ability to, to live view anywhere on their facility in addition to having the archive footage. Where we're going, where we are now is the next logical step. Okay, cameras, tell me what happened, tell me what's happening now, but tell me what you see. And so that's why you're seeing a lot of these uh, analytics come to market. It's just the next logical step into turning these cameras into a much more uh, value piece of security than simply telling you what used to ha what happened at this door or this, or this street uh, a month ago, yesterday, an hour ago, that sort of thing. And so with that, let's talk about license plate cameras, right? Now, this phrase is a little murky, which is why I'm bringing this up. License plate camera, customer wants a license plate camera. Well, traditionally, that could just mean a camera that is put at the door and attempts to simply record license plates as people come and go, right? And sometimes this is done well, sometimes it's not. This is a dummy system. There's nothing being done with that data. You're simply sticking a camera by the entrance in hopes that it'll catch the plate of a, of a vehicle as it passes through the entrance along with all of the video. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't, right? There's a lot of challenges that are involved with grabbing license plates, including lighting, speed, resolution, frame rate, uh, weather, um, snow, that sort of thing. Um, and you really don't know if that camera is doing what it's supposed to do unless you're manually checking and saying, yep, I can see that number. Yep, I can see that number. And so it's very limited, but I wanted to bring this up because a lot of times people kind of confuse this term with the other term, right? So license plate camera could mean just something like this, which is um, kind of the historical way to do it, older way to do it. License plate recognition is different. It is analytics driven data capture, right? You have an analytics going out, grabbing that number, and then creating a shared searchable archive, right? Which as Lieutenant will tell you, can be used for a variety of different purposes. Um, it allows blacklists and whitelists. Long, you know, it's kind of a fancy way of saying, camera, let me know if this, per, uh, um, like a blacklist would be camera, let me know if you see this plate, send an alert. A whitelist would be, okay, if you see this plate, it's fine, don't send an alert. So it allows you really to customize the camera's ability to tell you who is and who isn't on your facility or, or on your streets. And then it finally gives you that archive, right? You're gonna have a list of who came and went, when they were here, how often they were here, um, based on uh, the license plate and then eventually you know, like we're doing now making model color vehicle type that sort of thing but you have a database that you can search into and you, and you keep for as long as you want to for one year two year three years whatever however long it would suit you uh, and your needs and so you know LPR has been done but it's been done in, in quite a different ways technology is evolving as I said but if you look at traditional LPR deployments typically they tell you like one camera per lane right and that's because resolution was less than it is now. Um, so you'll commonly see things like this. If, if you had uh, a pole, you'd see cameras pointing every direction in hopes to grab license plates for that particular lane, right? Which was kind of what we had to do. We had to make sure there was enough pixels on target to grab those plates. So you dedicated the camera per lane. But we were advancing enough to where this is kind of, it's not obsolete, but you know we can get around this now. This is no longer the case. From a mobile perspective, um, you'll see it all different kinds of variety out there. I'm not gonna dive too much into this, but if you just Google it, you'll see all different kinds of solutions with all different kinds of architecture with where these cameras are. These cameras are purpose-built typically. They're made just to do one thing only, and that is to fit on these cars and to, and to do those things. But the result of that is that they are extraordinarily expensive. You know, we'll dive into that as well. But up until recently, if you wanted a mobile LPR unit, you'd be looking at something like this. There's a handful of manufacturers that do it, and you would be subject to, okay, here's, here's the price of all five of them. I got to go with one of those five because that's really all of there is. 
And so as I make my way to be able to introduce Lieutenant Hess here, let's talk about our relationship with, with Westchester Police. So um, they've been putting cameras in since 2017. Um, he will go over all that stuff. I don't want to go too much into it and steal his thunder, but we release these case studies online. They're available online. They're very easily Googled. Um, this is one from 2019 covering their success with fixed cameras, which is cameras on poles. And then this is the one from 2021, which is what we just released it uh, for the cameras in, in mobile units. There's no point in, in covering this now because that's what you're here for, to learn about. So we'll kind of proceed past this. I do have a video I'd like to play for you, uh, which I'll pull up right now as an introduction. This is a, a nice, um, nice video Westchester put out introducing their unit, which is called RTC Real Time Crime. Special attention, Mount Vernon, the lower end. Vehicles wanted, all rows wanted on the burglary out of Mount Vernon. West 3rd Street, westbound at South 14th Avenue. Going into the Bronx from Mount Vernon. That's Pennsylvania, Lincoln Baker Young 2573. LBY 2573. Thank you, and I, I want to take this opportunity real quick to thank Vin and thank Mobotics for giving me this opportunity to talk to you. I think it's a, it's an interesting and exciting topic, especially for me. Um, I'm kind of into this technology, there we go. I'm into this technology stuff, and it's been an interesting uh, idea working with Mobotics to kind of push one of these uh, things I enjoy out into my, my everyday job. So. Like Ben said, my name is Brian Hess. I'm a police officer here in Westchester County. I've been a police officer for over tw about 25 years now. Started in New York City and came up to Westchester about five years ago. Or, I'm sorry, 20 years ago. I did five in New York City. Um, I want to point out also, you'll see we're also a little bit more of a regional uh, crime center now. We also include Putnam County. So we have our partners in Putnam that have also joined us. So the name kind of stuck Westchester RTC, but it really is the Westchester Putnam Real-Time Crime Center. And we are Westchester. I'm going to give you the Westchester stats since this was set up before Putnam was really part of us, but we could add Putnam in pretty easily. But Westchester is an interesting place. Uh, Westchester is made up of 45 separate police departments. In those 45 separate police departments are 45 separate radios, 45 separate record systems, 45, oh, up to a couple of years ago, 45 separate LPR systems. As you can imagine, trying to run a plate or get any information was almost impossible. Uh, Westchester is, you know, approximately a million people and gateway to New York City. So New York City is right to our south. We border on the southern end of the Bronx in New York City. And we also border Connecticut and New Jersey on our left to right. So here we go. So here's some pictures. So Real-Time Crime Center was developed in approximately 2017. It was the end of 2017, 2018 we started. Uh, it started up slowly with a couple police departments and ramped up to where we are now. Um, up on the upper right-hand side, you'll see a picture of the room. We have approximately 25 desks with 30 monitors spread throughout the room monitoring all types of things, and we'll get more into that in a second. Goals, right? So why did we do this? The county made an investment to start this. Police departments make investments with personnel to send them there. And it's really to get, to provide instant information, right? Because there's 45 separate radios and systems, it's not very easy to get data to figure out where crime patterns are. So in addition to that, we're big with technology. So the LPR surveillance cameras, how do we put those in one central location, teach people how to use them and get the information back out into the field. And really that's one of the most important things is it's great to ingest data and all this LPR data. We've had LPRs in the county for over 20 years. The problem was for the first last 18 of them, it was just going into a pit. If nobody's taking action on these things, it's not helping anyone's safety. It's not helping anyone. So that was one of our goals is how do we get this information out to the field? 
Um, so as I said, I was, you know, I've done this for 20 years now up here. I've worked patrol, I did some plain clothes, I did detective unit, I was a detective unit supervisor. So Westchester County pretty much is, you know, it's a safe place to live, it's a nice place to live, but we do have our, our crimes. And one of the things I learned as an investigator was after you talk to the victim or witnesses, the first thing you do is you look for a video. Uh, it's almost the number one thing any detective does nowadays. Um, the problem is we're depending on video from the Costco system that somebody installed in front of their deli seven years ago. So we end up with images that look like this. And this is a real image from a real case in Mount Vernon about two weeks ago. When I saw it come across, I grabbed it because I thought it's completely appropriate for this. So evidence is probably one of the most important things in the investigative process to get it started. And this has changed, like Vin was talking about with the IP cameras and our upgraded resolution. And now we, we could use them more appropriately for investigations. So like I said, this was the AB, I'll do a little AB. This was the A photo from Mount Vernon shooting. We're looking for an Astro van. Luckily for me, three blocks down the road, we had installed our LPR system. And there's the B. So the difference for an investigator is huge. All the details we could pick out, even though I believe we did get the plate on this also, but it's also all these other details, stickers on the sides, colors, body moldings, all these little things make a difference when you're looking for somebody. And if there wasn't plates on this Astro van, we would need to be able to delineate this one from any other Astro van that's driving around. This is, this is where the difference has changed. It's where things have changed, I'd say, in the last couple of years. So, right, how do we use video to prevent crimes? Well, we know from training and education that criminals do the same thing, right? There's a modus operandi, MO, because they use stolen vehicles. If I'm gonna go commit a robbery or a burglary, I'm not gonna take my car with my registration. I, I'm gonna use a stolen car, right? We know they sometimes obstruct their plates. They obstruct the registrations. They usually have the same pattern. And the people we know, right? Who's the bad actor? Because this is where really we fell into the next stage. So as I was talking about, we use video for investigations. That's great, but the crime has already occurred, right? So how do we get ahead of that curve? How do we stop him before he can go do that burglary? How do we stop that car before it could do a shooting? And that's it, artificial intelligence, right? So we take these video cameras and we put artificial intelligence on top of it. In this case, we're talking about LPR. We're also testing a lot of these other systems with the cameras in different places around the county. But for today, LPR, right? So if I know there's a stolen vehicle in the past, that would have got dumped into that database I was speaking about earlier. Now that that plate is coming across to the, you saw the detective sitting at the desk, he'll get that information, he'll verify that information, he'll push that out to the 45 police departments. So hopefully a police officer can intercept that vehicle before this happens. Mobotics, so we chose Mobotics along with one of our partner agencies here in the town of Mount Pleasant because they had installed them in a train station parking lot. And that was the first time I ever saw 1080p IP video. And I was amazed, you know, knowing what I've seen throughout the years with, you know, blobs of pixels walking around that I could, I can make out plates, I can make out colors and distances. And that's really when our relationship with Mobotics started. So, and listen, all these, these things are true, even though this is a, my quick Mobotics commercial, Ben, I'm doing this for you. But it's true, the quality uptime recording form factor. And as you see, when you put a lot of these cameras out, spread wide distance, you need to have a, a good platform to start with, or else I'm gonna run around doing maintenance all day. And we're, we're actually a really good fit for that sort of thing. If I can, I'll just back up here real quick. So, uh, like he said, you know, I, I didn't pay him. For, I didn't pay him for this, although I probably would. <laughs> but at least um, a shirt or something. Yeah, right. So, you know, when I met when I met him a couple of years ago, those these were the things that he told me. Um, and it, it's true. One of the big things that is particularly important when you're talking about cameras that are going to go on poles is the uptime. If your camera goes down, you lose lose a lot of you lose your your ability to grab the, the, those plates. And so this brings the brings me to one of the point, one of the bullets that I actually added, we're well suited for analytics. And this is true, We Mobotics works especially well with analytics of all kinds, not just LPR, like facial recognition, all different kinds of stuff, for a couple of very specific reasons. Number one, um, and this is not 
it sounds like just marketing cheese stuff, but you know, hey, our image clarity is phenomenal. If, you, if you've ever seen Mobotics cameras, you kind of understand that. Um, we have a larger aperture, we let more light into the image. That results in better clarity, but it gives the analytics more data to work with. And so we typically are we typically are adding to the solution. We're at, we're putting the the analytics in a position to be successful because we're giving them more to work with, right? So that's one reason. Number two, uh, our form factor. The, again, the fact that we can we can slide into devices like a car, uh, a gate, that sort of thing very easily. Um, we have multiple lenses for one camera, so I can give you uh, again day and a night sensor with a long pass filter, which will make that license plate look like it's glowing. I can do all that with one camera. But the last thing is probably the biggest thing is going back to that solid state part, right? The, the cameras just run and run and run. And you can have the best analytics company uh, in the world running on these cameras. If your camera goes down, you've lost, you're totally blind. Your analytics don't work. And so between that and the fact that Lieutenant Hess doesn't have all the time in the world to grab, to get a lift and do maintenance on these cameras, we're an ideal solution to these, the, these sorts of applications because the cameras just run and run and you don't have to do, you don't have to touch them because that's that's cost loss loss of money and loss of time and so because we're engineered specifically to avoid those things we fit really well in those sorts of environments now i can hand, I can hand it back to you unless there's something you want to add no um i think we're going to show some examples of that and and that I, it's an interesting point and I, I say this a lot is police have a different need with these cameras maybe a business owner or a college or a hospital where our, we really only care about one thing, and that's image quality. We need the best possible picture that we could get. I'm not as worried about retention periods. Like we have a very limited retention period because I'd rather take that in quality than I would in retention. If we don't know about something within 10 days, I'm not worried about it. But within those 10 days, I wanna get the best quality images I could get. So, but let me jump back. Um, here's what we started with, fixed sites. We picked. Uh, key fixed sites around the county. And it's interesting because I'm, I'm thinking back when I first got here 20 years ago, there were only mobile units. There were no fixed sites. And then we kind of transitioned into fixed sites. And fixed sites are probably the best thing for you because they're perfect. They sit there, they run all day, they're not moving. There's, there's really less problems with fixed sites. And, and we put a ton of them up and we'll get to the numbers in a second. But this is pretty much where we started and what we're doing today. Uh, Vin touched on it earlier. There, these aren't dedicated LPR cameras that do snapshots. They're grabbing a snapshot image for the LPR processing, but we also do video. So if that LPR snapshot's not perfect for me, I could go back and look at video. Video as a second source has paid dividends in multiple occasions where maybe the, the LPR snapshot photo was just a plate, but we couldn't see inside the car. But if you backed up three frames, which we have the ability to do, maybe you get a better image of who's driving the car or what they're wearing. And because we're doing the installs ourselves, we're doing it at about a sixth of the cost. And it's probably less than that, but I'm, I'm, I'm kind of jumping here. We were paying, I don't want to get into detailed numbers, but we were get, paying over $75,000 per fixed site at one point. Uh, in addition to fixed sites, we started doing some LPR trailers because the need to have things mobile became very apparent. So we built, I believe it's five of these trailers, which we deploy as pop problems go on. And here, here's where we are now. Current fixed deployments, 126. Right now we have 50 more in the pipeline for the rest of this year and next year, the trailers. And we are doing over 13 million plate reads a week. Which, which is a huge number for us, especially. I think a year ago we were at eight. So we've added 5 million in the last year with these next set of sites and the mobiles, which we'll talk about next. And those are pandemic numbers. <laughs> you yeah, know, that's true. The the we had a couple of years ago, that probably would be even higher. That's, that's very true. Okay. All right, so what about, this is a lot of money invested. This is a lot of time invested. What have we done? So amazingly, and who would have known in Westchester County that there were in the last three years, or roughly three years, because we started late in 2017, there were over 2,300 stolen cars driving around. 
of those 2,300, we've intercepted, and when I say we, it's us and our partner agencies, have intercepted 500 of those, which have all been real stolen cars, which I don't know, you know, the cars that they're gonna bring overseas and sell and stuff like that usually happen at night. These aren't those cars. These are the cars that came back into Westchester probably to, to commit other crimes. So it's hard to really understand how much crime we prevented, but we know there's been a definitely a decrease because of this. Terrorist vehicles being you know, next to New York City, everyone's always very curious when we get these, what they call a big toff hit, the terrorist offender, the FBI wants to know every time one of these vehicles hit. So we've had 700 of those. Uh, hot list broadcasts, so that's vehicles that have committed crimes. So they just were seen fleeing uh, a burglary or a robbery. So a thousand of those were put out and missing vulnerable people, right? The other side of this, the police, not more law enforcement, less crime prevention is, is someone who's out missing, an elderly person, someone who needs their medications, that we don't know where they are, Alzheimer's. We, so we re recovered 270 of those, those people. Which is, which is also a great number. Um, so, you know, uh, this is a couple of other success stories which I really didn't put on here, which are interesting though, is we had a case out of Florida where there was a kidnapping. And I'm, I don't know the exact specifics, uh, you know, I won't get into it, but that Florida agency put down an alert on the vehicle saying their five-year-old daughter was just kidnapped in route to Canada. So they, they, they think they knew who did it. They think the person who did it, here's the plate. They think they're going to Canada with the child. They made it from Florida up to Westchester County. They came into Westchester and alerted on a plate reader. Officer found the car, stopped it, and that child was recovered, which is amazing, right? Because that's, you know, partially through the country, all through Virginia, you go up 95, everywhere, nothing until they get to Westchester. The other interesting story like that just happened a couple of weeks ago, which is a car stolen out of LA. Made it, same, same story, it's not as interesting as a kidnapping, but what I find interesting is that someone could steal a car in LA, drive all the way across country to New York, and the first place they're caught is in Westchester County, because that's the first place they ran into this LPR network we pretty much set up. Now I know there's other ones in different municipalities throughout the country, but I just found that as an interesting thing. Um, but that's enough about fix. So we're not really here to talk about fix. I think that's just some good background, really mobile. So, so much success with all these fix sites. Everyone's asking, what are we gonna do for mobile? Should we buy Vigilant? Should we buy MDI? Should we buy LSAG? None of those will incorporate with our, our system. So we said, hey, you know what? We could probably look to build something just like we built these fix sites. Can we do something on the mobile end? And this is where we started, right? Can we build it ourselves? But it leads, as everyone on here probably is aware, it leads to some different problems, right? Power and everything, cars are a 12 volt system. How do we power a 48 volt camera with a 12 volt system? How are we gonna do the processing? Uh, it's gotta sit in a police car, 24 seven operation, summer, winter, it doesn't matter. And because now you're talking about two moving objects, not just one, we need something with a high frame rate. Can we do that? And so this is one of, you'll see here, the picture here is one of our demo units from a couple of years ago using the S15, which is Mobotic's last platform. And it worked sort of, but the frame rates weren't there. The resolution wasn't there and there was no real good processing at that point. So we kept looking and you know, what's the other part is how else, how, instead of just making it, how do we make it better? than the, the older systems. Cost, we'll get into cost, cost is amazing. But power control, um, these proprietary systems, the ones that are still out in the market now, all take some kind of user interaction to turn them on. It takes a cop to plug something in, it takes a cop to go in and turn it on, it takes a cop has to go into the software and turn it on. They don't work independently. They're always incorporated into the existing system. That doesn't really work. Um, we need something that is on its own. That if the cop wants part of it, he can, but we need something to run independent of him. Uh, installation, installation was always, you, you could see the camera, that was like one of the original LSAG ones. The, it was a lot to mount, big boxes, lots of big heavy cables. Uh, it always took a specialist to, to install them and mount them. And like you say, you had to take them off for the car washes. It, it was always, it was a big to do. 
I think we only had three of these for the whole department at the time because they were super expensive and all these problems we were running into. So these are all the things we needed to fix, right? With this new version we're looking to build. Other things happened too. Um, Mobotics released the S74. I don't know, Vin could probably tell us for sure, but it's probably about a year and a half ago. We got our hands on them, right? Roughly around then, Vin, does that sound right? About a year and a half? Uh, a little less than that. Um, yeah, a little less than that, the seven series. Okay, but they, they offered us a lot of things we needed to fix. They are rugged, waterproof, and I'll show you some pictures. They run at a 4K resolution, which we need. That'll help. Higher frames per second. And customizable, like Vin talked about earlier, having those separate sensors with the cables allowed us a lot of flexibility, which I'll show you in the next couple slides. In addition to that, NVIDIA set out a new processor, which allowed us to do that process to get the edge. All solid state, and it was a 12-volt system. But still, no one, no one company offered everything we needed, right? So we needed to curate a solution. So power supply, we needed to find a specialty power supply that could control the PC and, and the camera without the user intervention and on a 12-volt system. And to withstand the, you know, a car starting in the winter and all these di different things happened. PoE injector, we needed to find one that can, is a PoE plus, it needed to be, and it had to run on a 12-volt system. Again, something, it's out there, but not easy to find, kind of a custom part and mounting. So we had to design and custom make our own brackets for the cars, which I'll show you next. Oh, so here, so I know a couple of people have asked about the architecture, but here's like a high level overview, right? The battery runs the modem. It also runs this vehicle power supply we've been talking about with ignition control. And that pretty much controls the system, it's independent. There is some user interaction through their desktop, but pretty much the LPR is always running with the police car. When the police officer turns the car off, it has a 20 minute window that it stays on. If the car hasn't gone out for the next tour, it'll gracefully shut down the PC and the, the camera. Hey, so if I can chime in, if you, if you don't mind okay. going back one slide. So again, going back to that, there's the camera on the right, the S74. And that one camera is going to do that day lens, that LPF, the night lens and an IR emitter. That's, again, it's, it's very, very unique. You're not gonna find a lot of cameras that can do that with one camera and in the form factor, the small form factor. So we're, we're in a very unique situation to be able to do this, whereas you really couldn't do it before then. And the cool part about what this architecture is, is that you can, we're not, you don't have to have a certain, well, Mobotics makes cameras, we don't make LPR analytics, which is why I haven't talked about it. Mobotics doesn't make license plate capture, right? We are the eyes for that system to work, which means we're compatible with a lot of different kinds. So some of our partners are, you know, we do well with Baxter, ISS, uh, FF Group. We can tie into Genetech systems or other large VMS platforms out there, because again, we're the eyes for their systems to work. Um, we're not talking about it today, but the cameras themselves can actually run the analytics on the cameras. So, you know, that's not what we're doing here, but if you had a smaller deployment and you wanted to run the, the LPR on the camera itself, Mobotics cameras can actually do that. We have a couple of different partners. They will do a uh, license plate and then also make, model, and all of that stuff without even needing a server. There are some limitations to that, right? So again, think of it like on a smaller scale, but um, from an architecture standpoint, it, it's much more open. You're not locked into any one particular path. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so Vin, so sometimes I'll, I'll jump ahead because in my head, I know it. So I appreciate you, you coming yeah. in there. So, so here is a picture of an install. I think this is a Yonkers police car. Yeah, it is. So, but just to show for those of you that don't know, this is pretty much what a police car trunk looks like. There's the radio system, the lights, controls, and siren. So everything you need to install this LPR solution is right there. We're, we're just adding on a couple parts. Okay. Oh, so mounting. I'm going to jump to mounting now. So the first bracket, the first setup we made was this push bumper. Uh, the first uh, was the push bumper mount, as you see here in the lower right hand corner. And you'll see the S74 is mounted right next to it on the push bumper. Every install is a little bit different depending on what kind of car you're using, but for the Ford Tauruses, the Chargers, the Ford Explorers, this came out to be our best choice at this point, right? We would mount them right down the push bumper Everything is encapsulated down the front and all the processing is being done on the trunk. This is one wire from the trunk up to the front of the car. Everything else is handled right there. 
one Cat5 wire. On a Dodge Durango, it gives us a little more options and we were able to actually mount them in the grill. Same concept, just this department didn't have push bumpers. So we kind of came up with our own solution. I think the, this Dodge Durango is really the only car you could do it with at this point though. So here's the image. Now this is where you see the image clarity. This is the image from a front push mount, mount setup. You can see, you can read the plates pretty much as I'll show you, I think it's the next slide in four lanes. You can read every plate you could see here. We're running a modified 4K resolution. So it's a 3840 by 1080, which has worked out real good for us. The only problem we we're running into, and I don't know if it's really much as much of a problem as a change is my department does a lot of parkway patrol. We have a Jersey barrier, usually between the, the lanes of traffic. So, to overcome that, we came up with an aluminum roof mount model, which you see here. This, I, I actually like this setup a lot better. The camera, instead of sitting outside of the car, is sitting in the headliner of the, in this case, it's a Ford Explorer. And the, the three lenses are right there on, on the roof. This offers you a better field of view because you're sitting higher. As you can see, a lot of our plate reads come from cars driving the opposite side of the roadway. So you gotta, estimate at lowest case scenario, this car is doing 50 on both sides. So that's a hundred miles an hour. And we capture those plates every day, all day. So for us, we like the roof mount. So you do have a bunch of different possibilities depending what your setup is. What have we done so far with mobile? Over 35 units we've installed, six different departments with a bunch more jumping on now. Um, great, our, our oldest one has been out there for a year. So that's probably been, like we said, the open probably about a year is the right number for the S74. We got one of the first ones there were to start testing it. And a lot of our numbers are going up because of mobile. We guesstimate 20 to 25,000 reads per week per car. That's all depending on what kind of operation, but a lot of the police, the marked police cars you see them on are 24 seven operations. So it leads us to a lot of reads. Uh, so, uh, some success stories since they've been out here. Uh, up in Carmel, it's up in Putnam County, a fatal hit and run accident. The car was captured as the officer was responding to the scene. He was fleeing in the white Nissan there. So a car that would never, probably never been caught if it wasn't for the LPR at the right place at the right time. This is an interesting one. Uh, shooting in the city of Mount Vernon, which is on the Bronx border, had some gang gun problems there. They had a white Ford Explorer that was involved. They knew it was a rental vehicle, but they had no, it hasn't been returned, but they had no idea where to find it. So that vehicle is right here, all the way to your left. So it's parked in the opposite direction. So three lanes away. So that was caught by a Yonkers police car. Uh, I think we have one more home invasion. Again, I think, believe it was the city of Mount Vernon. That Tahoe you see coming at you was caught the next day because it was caught on the LPR. Oh, so here's the interesting part. I probably, I probably should have done like a drum roll or something, Ben, hmm. before we got to this. But what, what is this cost? Like, how, how are we doing this? So these are all New York State OGS, New York State contract prices. And so you'll see a LSAG system, which is, you know, one of the original ones we used, 18.5, and that's not including the installation parts they usually get you for too. NDI, you see. And so this Mobotics S74 solution, that's like, this is all in with all the parts we've been speaking about is under 4,000. So it's been great for us. It's allowed us to push out a lot more mobile LPR units than we had in the past. The budgets stay the same. So if our budget is 25,000 for one LPR per year, we just don't get one anymore, right? It's not like we're not buying LPRs. It's just now we're buying five LPRs where in the old days we would have bought one. So Finn, I mean, that's all I have. I'll, I'll kick it back to you for any other closing statements or anything. Well, this is the exciting part. Like this is this is like the secret. Um, Lieutenant Hess here is the, really spearheading this with a camera that was just released about a year ago. And it's kind of changing the game, right? So. We're able to do something now that was, you know, so a lot of departments out there that have maybe considered LPR that that haven't really done it done it previously can now consider it because it's within the, the budgetary limitations that they might have, right? So at that cost, yeah, you know, one quarter of the cost, you're going to see people interested that haven't been interested historically. 
and 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 reviewing some of the cases, some of the use cases he's used this for, you know, what is the value of being able to push an Amber Alert out to all of the vehicles or all the fixed locations and have all of those cameras look for the plate that you're looking for, right? assuming you have a plate. I mean, this the solution itself, the concept of LPR is so powerful, but our, our job, my job mostly is to, is to educate people on just how far it's come, how you know, inexpensive it can be to, be to be had and deployed, and just how much value that there really is, like real world street value that there is on having these solutions um, deployed in, in one or multiple communities working together. It's just, it's, it's a really cool story to be a part of. Um, as you can tell, I probably, I like talking about it a lot because it's, it's, it's always fun to, to kind of see what you're up, what you're uh, up to over there and what in RTC, so. I mean, I think the only other thing I was just thinking of that I, I missed that we probably should touch on is these more uh, proprietary systems were just LPR cameras. They were nothing else. The other thing we're doing with ours, which I find interesting is it's live streaming video, right? So if you want to push that video back live to the RTC, we've done that in the past if we need to. If an you know, officer's not answering his radio or we hear something going on, we can now go right into his car and see and make sure everyone's okay and there's not a situation. And I believe some people are also using it as a dash camera and recording that footage with the S74 also. So it does lead to a couple, you can do anything you could do with a camera. It's just, it's also, it's doing double, triple duty at the same time. It uh, looks like most of the questions are, we've answered already, which is just awesome. Um, a lot of comments about, a lot of nice comments that I'm reading, but I'll save those for later. No reason to do that on air, but it uh, looks like everyone's very pleased with the, very, very thorough, especially for a cop. Look at you. Very thorough presentation. Well done. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining. Um, again, reach out to us if you have any questions, and I hope this was well worth your time. I know we're all being webinar to death right now. But, you know, we, we were really excited to share this with you. So thank you very much for giving us your time.